everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of AIHR Live. I am Nelly Verlinden. I will be your host today, and I hope everyone is doing well. As always, don't be shy and do say hi to us in the comments on LinkedIn and let us know where you are watching from today. As you can see, today I'm being joined by Tom Haag, who is the director of the HR Trend Institute. Hi, Tom. Hi, Nelly. How are you? I'm excellent, thank you. And you? I'm very well, thank you. I'll be back to you in a second. Um, first, let me tell you what Tom and I will be talking about today. Of course, our conversation is going to be all about workplace wellness. So we'll touch on some of the pitfalls. We'll look at how organizations can prioritize their wellness initiatives. We'll also uh, look at some of the trends in the wellness uh, sector for 2021 and beyond and much more. So I think it will be a very exciting conversation. As always, if you have any questions or thoughts or feedback for us, do not hesitate to share those as well in the comments. And then Tom and I will be more than happy to answer as many of your questions by the end of this episode. Now, there's one extra highlight I have for you today, and it's going to be a first for us. After this session on LinkedIn, Tom and I will be moving our conversation to Clubhouse, where we'll continue to talk about workplace wellness. So if you want to join us afterward, we'll share the link as well in the comments towards the end of this episode. For now, however, we are very much here on LinkedIn still. And Tom, I think I did enough of the talking. Uh, we'll go back to you because perhaps you want to say a few words about yourself before we get started. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is uh, Tom Haak. I'm the director of the HR Trend Institute. And at the HR Trend Institute, we are trend watchers in the domain of uh, people and uh, uh, organization. And uh, I write about it. I speak about it. And you can find me. Yeah, on YouTube, on the website, whatsoever. I'm specifically interested in what's new and how can we use that in the HR domain. Yes, exactly. Which is one of the reasons why you are here with us today, of course, Tom. Um, and since you're very much um, into the HR trends and an expert uh, on that matter, um, how have you seen workplace wellness evolve on the agenda of organizations over the past years? What can you tell us about that? Yes, and, uh, and, 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 and I think we should not go into definitions, but of course, there are all kinds of uh, terms used. Eh? So maybe in, in the far away, eh, we, we used to call it, uh, we used to talk about satisfaction. Eh? And then it became employee engagement. And then uh, 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 it became uh, commitment. And uh, now we also saw uh, happiness, of course, appearing, maybe more in, uh, in uh, 2020 than in uh, 2021 or even 2019. And wellness came up more uh, also specifically in the last uh, year because, of course, uh, yeah, let's say physical and mental health is high on the agenda of people, high of the agenda, high on the agenda of organizations. So a lot of terms. We'll come back to that. I think they are often related to similar things. Absolutely. And so, Tom, um, what do we call it? Indeed, workplace wellness or well-being or employee happiness. Um, what have you seen that the impact of the pandemic has been on this theme? Yeah, I think the, the 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 impact, of course, of the pandemic has been big, not only in the workplace but in the life of people. Eh? So we mm -hmm. have seen enormous effects and and an enormous focus on initially physical well-being. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, physical well-being came first, also for governments, not only for organizations. And now you see, let's say, mental well-being coming increase had increased attention to mental well-being people say okay yeah. well maybe there is more than just physical well-being what happens to people in those new situations i think we should take a couple of things into account one is um w there are many people working and and only a small relatively small group of people can work from home and has the luxury yeah. of remote working so there are a lot of workers at the front, uh, mm -hmm. in the hospitals, for example, workers, uh, truck drivers, in transportation, yes. 
uh, uh, in retail as far as they are still working. Warehousing. Yeah. Uh, all the yeah. people ordering online, well, those packages have to be packaged by people in warehouses. So mm -hmm. also, or maybe specifically for those people, uh, the pressure has gone up. Uh, uh, they have to work harder. They have to work on the more adverse co uh, conditions. So that group, we should have a look at as well. Then there are the people who yeah, were, were pulled out of their comfortable office and mm -hmm. pushed in their homes for yeah. some of them. Maybe like you and I, I, I'm used to work out of my home. This is my my ethic. But for other people, this was a new experience. Uh, yeah. Disconnected from their team, disconnected from their boss. Uh, 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 so uh, risk factors for many people, people working remotely, people working not uh, remotely. And well, I think we're only at the beginning to see what the actual effects are. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a, 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 some... Uh, uh, research. Oh, sorry, my my, uh, my my Siri always answers me. Uh, there is some first research, for example, that shows that especially people new in jobs have a difficult time, a more difficult time than in the past. And because if you start new in the job in a remote situation, uh, it's a lot more difficult. Uh, if yes. you are new, new, or if you have just switched jobs, that's a difficult situation. And those people are probably more under risk than people who have more established uh, established jobs. Yes, and I think, and we'll, we'll touch on this later, Tom, but I think what is very important here, and that would also explain why people who are in a new role or just started in a new company have more trouble because um, there's the importance of teams in all of that. But we'll, we'll touch on that yeah. a little bit later. Um, first, though, Tom, what I would like to talk about with you is... Um, before we also look at some of the actual wellness, workplace, workplace wellness trends, um, is what are some of the things that organizations should take into account when it comes to uh, workplace wellness? So then I'm thinking, for instance, about the scope, but yeah. also of, yeah. So what can you tell us about that? A couple of things. Uh, one is, and, and I, I don't like the word necessarily, but we have to look at it holistically. And it's a little bit as with fun and uh, 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 purpose and those type of issues. It's not that you have work and wellness, that you have work and fun. Eh? You have to look at work itself and the work process itself. So don't create necessarily things on top of the work. No, the, 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 the main elements are in the work. So see what you can do in the work. So... And I, yeah, also in the in the well-being area, uh, you see interventions that are more outside work. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we have talked laughingly about yeah, uh, the, the yoga apps and, and things like that. I don't say they are not useful, but you better look at the actual work. So one is a holistic view. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think you already mentioned the word scope. Um, there's a tendency to scope only on the, on the, the employees. Right? We talk about employee well-being and the, the people on the payroll. Yeah. But uh, these days, of course, it was also in the past, it's also about well-being of other people. For example, clients. Not for example, but maybe primarily clients. How are what? How is it with the well-being of our clients? Uh, suppliers. Yeah. That's a longer term issue, but there are many companies, there are companies, not necessarily many, that care a lot about their employees. But if you look at the way their suppliers are treated or the working conditions of their suppliers, well, today, if you look at, at, at what is happening, well, there are a lot of people working for suppliers in, 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 in very terrible circumstances at the moment. Yeah. Orders have gone down. Uh, they don't get the vaccines that we get in the Western world. So suppliers, we, big issue, not for today, but you have to take those into account. And then yeah. wider society as well. So it's not only your employees, not only your clients, not only your suppliers, but also how can you help as organizations uh, 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 yeah, to, to make society more livable? Or So yeah. that's scope. Eh? So one is holistic. Secondly, yeah. is 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 uh, is uh, scope, uh, and well, I, I repeat that, but 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 don't try to make 
things too complicated. Let's let's also try to look at evidence, facts and figures, analytics that were there already, and there's mm -hmm. no reason not to use that today. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I'll come back to that, but I, I'll just mention one one thing here. Uh, there's ample evidence that one of the most important relationships at work is the relationship employee team leader that is a yeah. super important relationship also for well-being of people if mm -hmm. that relationship is good well then we 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 we, we can do a lot of things mm -hmm. so, and we know that already for years and years and years so if there's no number one intervention on my list would also be also always be what can you do to improve the quality of that relationship yeah absolutely thank you so much tom i mean i i usually try to do a recap of people's answers but you you did that very clearly yourself but so i think i i'll still do it um just because you know habits uh, they die hard so what's important for organizations to take into account is first of all remember that we should take a holistic view and not just think of it as work here and fun or well-being there. Very good point. Then you mentioned the scope. Uh, I think this is a super interesting topic, uh, perhaps something we can discuss further about later on, because indeed, let's start thinking not just about workplace wellness for our employees, but let's also indeed think, for instance, of suppliers or clients. I find that very interesting. And then the, the last point is um, look at the data that you already have and see what you can do with those. All right, Tom, we are going to move on because uh, the clock is ticking. Um, now, what I'd like to do is um, look at a few of the workplace uh, wellness trends. And then um, I'd like to look at the ones that you believe should be priorities for organizations uh, this year and the next. Now, for time's sake, let's uh, stick to three trends, please. Yeah. And you want me to list them? <laughs> if you exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, no, I can. <laughs> uh, I think one trend and one intervention is to go back to the start. That is, what type of people are you hiring? Yes. So uh, 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 I've talked about that before, but I'm a big fan of uh, the concept of anti-fragility. And that is, uh, you have, you could say resilience. Eh? Resilience is you can bounce back, eh? but anti-fragility is more you can bounce back at a higher level. As an individual, eh? you can benefit from, you could say, stressful situations. So okay. if you hire more of people with a, anti-fragile personality, you are probably uh, better suited for coming crisis. And there will be other crises uh, coming. And many organizations found out that they were probably not well prepared enough. So the question is, how can we become as organizations more resilient, more anti-fragile? And we can do that by hiring different type of people. So that's one intervention I would uh, 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 see as a, a, a trend. Mm -hmm. um, the 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 the, the uh, uh, other thing is maybe not, yeah, maybe not a trend, but uh, 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 is is an intervention. Eh? I would uh, 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 recommend, eh? and uh, 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 that is, um, don't pamper people too much. Yes. So the, 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 the pampering element, and we, that also needs probably a wider discussion, but mm -hmm. there is uh, 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 interesting research, and I recommend people to read it. It's, it's, uh, I think it's Marcus Buckingham who, who did that research. It was a research about what makes people uh, resilient. And I'll, con I'll come back to be because resilience is a little bit different than engagement, but both right. of them are important for well-being. Eh? If you're engaged and resilient, then probably your, uh, your well-being is also okay. Eh? But <laughs> resilience, and his research showed that people uh, who are exposed to more adverse situations become more resilient. And so if we keep people away from those type of situations, that's probably not the thing to do. If you combine that with number two, that is a good relation with the team leader, 
Hè? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Psychological safety. Hè? Mm-hmm. Offering people a, a safe environment with people in a sense who care about them. Those two are already good ingredients. His research also showed that, for example, age is not a factor. You have young people, old people. You, if you, the age does not tell you whether people are resilient or not. Also, gender, mm-hmm. it's not that male or female uh, makes a difference there. But it's team leaders. It's, of course, also your personality. I already mentioned that. If yeah. you're team leader, it's also senior management. Let's not forget senior management. If senior management is good, it's well. So that's resilience. Yes, yes. yes. Engagement is more, do you love, do you... Do you like your company? Do you like your work? And do you want to contribute? And there, the team element is is more important. For resilience, not so much. But for engagement, the team element is very, very important. So that's, uh, uh, you could say, also a longer-term trend, but more Mm -hmm. emphasis on the team. And so also there, the question is, how can you make sure that even people who primarily work solistically, how can you make them part of a team? Uh, Because that will help at least in their engagement uh, uh, levels. So it's nothing new. Uh, Take care, make sure you have good team leaders, which is not easy. Make sure people are part of the team and make sure that people uh, love their work. And if you then, I summarize it for you uh, before you do it. (laughs) Good HR leads to well-being. That would be my statement. So it's not about elements of HR. It's the whole picture of HR. And that will lead to more. So companies that have good HR, good companies, yeah, they they have less issues than than companies that are poor. And poor companies cannot, well, you can, they, they cannot repair things with quick and dirty, simple measures. No. No, no, very interesting, Tom. But, uh, indeed, I, I won't repeat what you what you said. <laughs> Although I could imagine the next question being, though, um, let's zoom in a little bit more on the uh, the good team leader. And I, I, I imagine, especially now, um, whether it's people that are still working, indeed in the workplace, whether that's a warehouse or whether it's a supermarket or whether it's in retail, for as far as that's possible, or whether it is people that indeed have been taken out of the office and are at home. But what um, can HR do to equip these team leaders now to even better, to be better team leaders? What would you have to say about that? Yeah, and I don't have, uh, you could say, revolutionary ideas uh, there. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, It has to do a lot with listening. Eh? Yeah. Listening to people. Not telling people what to do, but listening to the people. That's an open door, but still mm-hmm. that's a very highly, that's a skill many people don't have. And the ability to listen and not to interpret too quickly. So already in the last year, uh, you saw that in, in some organizations that came naturally, the team leaders reaching out to their people regularly, yeah, yeah. calling you. Uh, hey, Nelly, how are you? How can I yeah. help you? Uh, what can I do to help you uh, uh, in your work? And the willingness to really help eh? mm-hmm. uh, on a practical level, not, not, uh, not uh, uh, but on a practical, if you said, well, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm working here in, in rather adverse conditions or my, my computer monitor is not fantastic or I don't know what to do, eh? those types. So, so it's listening mm-hmm. in combination with discipline and that's the regularity of the contact. And then it's back to situational leadership. We, we, we discuss new employees. Eh? But some, of course, some people need more attention than other people. And, and I would focus a lot on people new in the jobs and people who have just made uh, switches in jobs because those people are the, are the highest under risk. Um, yeah, so I leave it. For, there, there's more, of yeah. course, more interventions you can do on the, on the team leader uh, uh, level because it's also, and that's a role HR can play. And what can you do to support the team leaders? Yes. And also, team leaders are are sometimes struggling with with what is expected of them and what they can do. But many things are super super simple. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you, Tom. I see, uh, by the way, that there are quite a few questions already coming through in the chat, so that is fantastic. I have a few more questions for Tom myself, but then we will definitely get to your questions. So don't be shy and drop your question in the comments. Um, now, Tom, something else I wanted to talk to you about is... Can I answer one question here? I see Aisha Baumar asked me, uh, what is anti-fragility as an older term for resilience? This is anti-fragility is, is, is uh, resilience, anti-fragility. And the book to read, I'll show you, <laughs> is uh, 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 Anti-Fragile from uh, Taleb, 2012, but that's a super good book. He has also written The Black Swan. Both books are superb and, and uh, with a lot of good applications for us. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's all right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tom. And thank you also for the book tip. Uh, awesome. Um, let's, <laughs> let's take a look now at... Um, so research has also shown that many organizations, they have upped their budgets this year for all kinds of wellness initiatives. So you already men mentioned mental health at the start of our conversation, but we see that especially in the areas indeed of mental health or telemedicine or also... Um, mindfulness that we, we see that organizations are spending are planning to invest much more money there this year how do you think that organizations can prioritize um what wellness initiative to to go for and what wellness initiative perhaps to you know um i i know that this will probably of course differ from one organization to another but what can you tell us about this uh, i think you have to take a couple of things into account Mm -hmm. One is, and I've talked to, uh, about that a lot before, but this, this is about personalization. Don't, don't assume that you know what people want. Eh? Mm -hmm. So personalization or customization is easier. Customization is, is asking people, how can we help you in the current situation? And what would, what would help you? What kind of tool? What kind of... So that's an important thing. Don't, don't do things for everybody in the same way. And, and don't be too paternalistic. Uh, HR can have a tendency sometimes to be paternalistic. So you have to move a lot. And then, uh, uh, well, yeah. So, so that's one. Secondly, it's easier to design all these tools than to implement them. And we know from the past, uh, uh, even in, in the days when I was still working in companies, uh, for example, they uh, in installed uh, fitness centers in the company. Mm -hmm. What did you see? that uh, the people who used the fitness center the most were the people who already went to the fitness center a lot and said, okay, thank you. There's now a fitness center at work. Now I can do it in the, boss th in the time of the boss. Eh? So uh, uh, how do you invite people to use those tools? Yeah. And then a concept which is, 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 is useful is the concept of nudging. Yeah. So one is personalization. I talked about it. Second is nudging. Nudging is designing clever ways to invite people to show certain behavior. And uh, I will will give you a couple of uh, examples. For example, the behavior you want is that people move more. Yeah. If yeah. they spend the whole day behind there. So. Maybe it's not nudging, but it's an intervention that invites people to show certain behavior. If you provide them, I'm I'm at behind my standing desk at the moment. Yes, mm -hmm. so uh, that's relatively simple for me. I get a signal, hey Tom, time to stand, and I'm, bing, my desk goes up, and I stand for a while. Yes. Yeah. Uh, instead of saying to me, you have to stand, you give me, you 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 invite me to show that behavior. Um, another nudge could be. Uh, and, and, and I see quite some companies implementing that at this moment that is inviting people for walking meetings. Eh? Mm, yes. And, okay, uh, I'll come along and, and we'll walk an, for an hour in, in, the neighbor, in your neighborhood. And we'll talk. Uh, uh, so that's the connection. It's healthy. Uh, 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 and it's an easy uh, 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 intervention. So there are more ways, of course, to do it. But... Uh, just providing the solutions probably is not enough. Hmm. Uh, you should uh, one, you should provide solutions that really people need and are going to use personalization. That might be a mixture of things. Uh, hmm. Secondly, pleasantly invite them to use those and don't be too top down. Don't be too paternalistic. 
Yeah, nudge, nudge them. I, nudge. I like that one. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Tom. I'm not going to recap now. We're just going to go to my last question for you because uh, then we can actually get to the audience questions. Um, so the last one I have, Tom, um, is how can organizations measure the impact of their wellness initiatives? Well, I think, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, a concept which I like a lot is is the, the is continuous listening. Huh? So continuous mm -hmm. listening is about do you have are you creating an architecture in your company where you frequently and preferably real time sense what's going on in the organization, which teams are doing well, which teams are not doing well, which individuals have 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 an issue, and mm -hmm. there are also clever instruments today where where you don't have to send people surveys but where you can use other ways to measure uh, uh, different aspects of, of the work eh? engagement wellness well-being uh, not all that technology is indisputable yeah, because of course we have to uh, take uh, uh, privacy elements uh, uh, into account uh, that is also very important mm. uh, but, uh, so continuous measuring but if you don't do that you can of course a, a pull survey is also a good start a simple per silver survey and you saw companies that already uh, at the beginning of 2020 uh, at the beginning of the COVID 19 crisis they started to increase their measurement they did not stop it they said no we have to increase our measurement short surveys to the people so that we know what's going on but mm -hmm. also that we know uh, uh, which people and which teams are doing well yeah, because there are uh, and it's back to partly to anti-fragility and there are people who like this yeah, and who are doing better and who flourish so what can we learn from those people and what can we learn from those uh, 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 teams so it's not only measurement but it's also starting to yeah, share experiences, connect yes. people and say, hey, what can we learn? Hey, Tom, what are you doing? Nelly, what are you doing? What can we learn from each other? And how can we adapt? And then it's back to, yeah, agility, agile, working, uh, experimenting, see what you can do. What are the interventions that that really uh, uh, make a difference? And, uh, and, and also, yeah, don't involve the people eh? <laughs> so ask people okay what are your ideas what can we do instead yeah. of sitting there with your team and designing all kinds of cool and then and, and, uh, 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 what, what, whatever interventions but in most organizations many people have fantastic ideas and mm. not complex, but often very simple uh, yes. we've seen uh, often it's practical things the good examples are for example uh, I've seen companies uh, that provide provide uh, childcare. Eh? They say, okay, well, if you have issues working at home and your children are running around, uh, uh, you you can hire a, 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 I don't know how you call it babysitter childcare uh, uh, one one or two days per week, and we will mm -hmm. pay it. Or you can rent a hotel room and sit there in a quiet uh, uh, place. Or we can be a lot more flexible in our working hours. Many companies are doing that at the moment, even companies that are reducing working hours, saying, well, we, we go from a 40 to a 32 hour week. Uh, companies like Spotify, who say at the moment, and, and they are, of course, advanced companies, but say, we don't care where people work, in which yeah. country people work. Eh? You can work anywhere, anytime. Well, of course, that's, back, that, that's a luxury there where you can afford it. Because if you're a truck driver or working in a hospital or working in uh, in uh, in in uh, in a magazine uh, in a warehouse, that's a lot more difficult. Yes, definitely. So I'm going to try to recap that quickly, though, Tom, in, in terms of when it, how our organizations can measure. So there was um, the continuous listening you uh, spoke about. There are, of course, the uh, quick uh, pulse surveys that can be used, and then. Actually, it comes back again to really listening to people and also asking them uh, what works for them and what doesn't work for them, if I am correct. Yeah, and I've seen a company 
uh, 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 that does a super simple thing with the help of uh, Google Forms or, or Survey Monkey, and they sent a survey to their people every, I think every two weeks, asking uh, the net promoter score. To what extent would you recommend our uh, our company as an employer to your family and friends? One, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one to ten. And secondly, what can we do to make your li working life better? What can we do? Give yeah. us suggestions. And and, yeah. uh, and and then, but then and then you have to act, of course, on the suggestions because if you don't do that, it backfires. Yes, definitely. But uh, that's a good example. Thank you so much for that, Tom. All right, now it's over to the audience questions. If in the meantime, you have a question that pops up for Tom. Please share it with us in the comments or thoughts about uh, wellness trends or wellness in general. Please share them with us in the comments. And now then to the first question, Tom. And it's a question coming from Amy Luckenbill. And um, the question is, uh, can you talk to us about how the audience changes your approach to employee wellness? Because indeed, employees in an office environment and employees in a manufacturing environment have different needs, preconceptions and ideas about what wellness means. So how does the audience change the approach, Tom? Well, there are also, let's say, let's start with the commonalities. Eh? And uh, uh, that there are common elements that are important for most people in working situations. That's like, uh, I like to contribute, yeah? And, and my contributions are uh, 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 not rewarded, but uh, uh, I, recognized. I, get yeah, yeah. I get positive recognition for what I'm doing. I work with people that cover me, that, that, that cover my back, that I'm part of a team. Uh, yeah. I have a perspective. Uh, uh, I know where we're going. I work for a company that has a certain purpose in life or in, 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 in the world. Uh, those elements are important wherever you work. Eh? If your basic needs are met, so you can go back to the Maslow pyramid, of course, if you don't have shelter and you don't have food, uh, 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 whatever, uh, 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 that, that's more important but if those are covered then you come to these type of elements and then you 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 get different audiences as as the the question asks right? because for some audiences it's different but it's it, it's not only looking at the type of job uh, but also at the personality of people and so what we also have learned in the last years uh, that uh, we have to look at personality of people because different personalities have different needs and different ways they react to situations. Um, so so uh, if you look at yeah, uh, it, it, the job itself also contains, of course, elements that we have to take into account. In some jobs, uh, let's say, the, the health and safety is super important. Right? Mm. I've done a lot of work in, in the past in, in, in mining uh, industry and in uh, oil and gas. Well, therefore, well, it's very important that you're safe yes. and that you can do your work uh, uh, in a healthy uh, way. Uh, if you look at hospital workers, that's that's today also the same. Right? Are, if you work in a hospital, can you work in a safe way? Do, does your uh, uh, employer provide you all the, the, the measures uh, uh, you can take? So, I would say let's look at the common elements because often there is a lot of elements you can already uh, uh, action on. We mentioned mm. team leader. There mm. are personal elements. So look also at the personality of people. Take that into account. And also look at the job content of people. There's a lot of ammunition there. And then last but not least, don't forget the private situation of people, the home situation, uh, their their social network, their, their surroundings, because that's also an important uh, uh, element uh, uh, for yeah for well being. Yes, I think a really great answer, Tom. So rather than perhaps uh, thinking of uh, the audience in general and the audience being either people based in offices or the audience being people based in in um, in warehouses, for instance, or uh, on the road or in in retail stores, you say uh, let's look at what 
everyone has in common fair point i think then you say look at of course the personal the, the person the personality you also say look at the specific job makes sense because indeed some jobs require uh, a different security um uh, regulations etc and then uh, last you say um oh no i forgot the last one what's the, the fourth <laughs> one that you mentioned <laughs> <laughs> anyhow but you say look at oh you said look at the personal situation sorry yeah, yeah. that's indeed very important and that comes back to this holistic uh, way of yeah. viewing things yeah so yeah. fantastic basically look at these and base your base your approach on on these four elements uh thank you i think that was a really good answer uh, i have another question uh, here and the question tom is um how can you recognize um, anti-fragile uh, personality traits when hiring? Yeah, that's a, that's a, 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 a good uh, a question. Uh, there are good personality tests. And uh, I'm not going to give a lecture on personality tests here, but one of those solid tests is the big five personality test. Mm -hmm. and, and you might know it under the acronym ocean because ocean are the five dimensions of the big five personality and so i've seen research that does okay how do people with an anti-fragile personality score on the big five personality uh, uh, test for example i just take the the first dimension the o of openness are you to what extent are you open for new experiences yes you can imagine it's it, it, it's not rocket science that the higher you score on the O, o dimension, eh, that's an important element for being anti-fragile. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, uh, the the last uh, uh, element, uh, 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 the last dimension on the Big Five personality test is the N of neuroticism. That's mm -hmm. very uh, psychological, but it's more. Uh, uh, yeah, are you easily uh, 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 put off course? Huh? Uh, uh, how stress? Uh, 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 how does stress influence you? And there you would people, uh, you would like people who score low on N, not very mm -hmm. neurotic, but they are stable. So stability and open to uh, a new experience. Those two dimensions already are important for the anti-fragile personality. Thank you, Tom. Interesting. I have one last question, I think, for you, uh, unless there are any other questions coming in, which is still possible. You know, if you have a last minute question for Tom, do uh, share it in the comments. Uh, and in the meantime, Tom, I have a last one uh, for you here. And that is um, in terms of monitoring, many people are wary about sharing their health or their information in general with employers. Um, what can you say about the best way to ensure their privacy um, while still impl implementing certain workplace uh, wellness uh, initiatives? Yeah. And I think that this is a super important uh, uh, point. Uh, I think that it's, it's who owns the data. Yes. And especially in this area, but I think in most area, it's important to take the employee as a starting point. So th the data is owned by the employee. And the data is not owned by the company in this uh, in, in this way. And for example, uh, I'm a keen user of I, I have my Apple Watch. I record my sleep. I I, I, I record uh, my, when you need my, to stand up. <laughs> when I need to stand. Yeah, absolutely, every hour I get a signal. Tom, time to stay. so I know and I monitor it and I love it. Yeah, but luckily I don't have an employer. I, I'm self-employed. But if my employer would say, "Hey, Tom." we would expect you to download that data every day to our central database, I would be very uh, wary. Mm -hmm. So, and it's it's not necessary. Eh? So you can, I wouldn't mind if my company would provide me an Apple Watch or any other uh, watch. Eh? We're not making an advertisement here. Uh, so provide people the means, let them choose. So. I mean, this is a good example because if you say, well, I don't want an, an Apple Watch, I want a, a, a whatever, a Fitbit, or I want something else. Well, yeah, fine. Eh? You have Garmin, you have... Because it's your instrument, but we will help you to make the best use of these type of tools. Yeah. So 
uh, I think it's very, uh, but, but, but in many organizations still, it, it, uh, the, the top-down approach is very dominant. We want data, we want to collect it and analyze and then look at our dashboards, where it's red, where it's green, where it's orange. Well, take as a starting point the employee or the, the not even only the employee, we have discussed that. Huh? I would I, I would do that wider than just the employees. Why not your clients? Huh? Because your clients uh, like that uh, uh, as well. So don't use the data to track and monitor people because that will backfire enormously. Yes. Yes, and I think another point to add here is, and also show show if you do um, want to use the data of your employees, show them what you are using that data for yeah. and how it will benefit them. Right? I think that's an important one as well. Yeah, and if you you have to absolutely be open about it, so yeah. you can say we are tracking your online time, not to see whether you're working or not, but we we, we like you to 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 take a rest now and then. And we, yeah. and we also have a responsibility. So we're tracking your online time. And if you're too much online, we will give you a signal saying, hey, Tom, time to shut off. It's six o'clock. Ajax is playing. <laughs> Go home. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and if you're transparent, exactly what you're saying, also why what you are doing with that data, then I think it's okay. Yeah, I think there was another question just that just came in from um, Asalama Sidi. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Um, and if not, I apologize. So Tom, how can you better manage your own stress and better support your team? What do you have to say about that before we wrap up? One minute. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. During well, COVID-19, she, she, he, he or she adds. Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I cannot add a lot to what, what people already know. For me, the key is, one, sleep well. Eh? So mm. you're all, if, if you don't sleep well and you don't take care of your physical well-being and, and you don't have connections to other people, yeah, so, so in a, yeah, first take care of yourself. As in the plane, they say, first yourself, because then yeah. you're able to help other people. So I think that's always good guidance. Uh, and, and you can find numerous programs online that help people to, to stay fit. And then the team is back to the, what, the start of our conversation. Uh, make the connection to people on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Listen to them and ask them how you can help them. Yeah, I think that was uh, short but uh, sweet. <laughs> Thank you, Asalama, for that question. Um, all right, I think that uh, brings us to the end of this um, episode, Tom. Now, as I said at the start uh, of this uh, AIHR Live, Tom and I, we will be moving now our discussion about workplace wellness to a clubhouse. So we will share the link to that clubhouse uh, room, I think I can call it. Um, we'll share it in the comments here on LinkedIn. So for those of you who are on there, please join us and we can chat uh, yeah. further over there. Thank you, Tom, for joining us and for and sharing we'll your insights. And we'll minutes before we're there and... Uh... Yeah, we'll take a couple of minutes so you can yeah. drink some water or take a coffee. Um, so thank you so much uh, for that. Tom, goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Now, from me to you, uh, thank you so much as well for joining us uh, today. Um, uh, for those of you who are looking to learn more about using HR data and digital tools to create unique employee experiences, including um, with attention for employee well-being, we recommend that you take a look at our digital HR certificate program that you can find more information uh, on, on AIHR.com. And if you're keen to become the ultimate T-shaped HR professional, you can go for a full academy license and there is 20% off until tomorrow. More information on that also on AIHR.com. Now, from me to you once more, thank you so much for joining us from literally all over the world I saw. Um, I hope to see you soon for another AIHR Live. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>